Well, you guys seem to enjoy our recent Superhero Facts video, so here we are with the second installment in quick succession. These days, the popularity of superheroes is such that a lot of people think they know everything there is to know about their favorite bad guy battling champions, but they couldn't be more wrong. The history of comic books is so long and rich that there are bound to be facts that have passed them by, slipped their mind, or some that they have misconceived. So this video aims to educate the masses regarding some of those facts. We hope you enjoy it, and make sure you subscribe to our channel, join the notification squad to receive alerts every time we upload something new. Here are 10 superhero facts that never crossed your mind, part two. And before we start, can you guess this movie from these emojis? Stay tuned for the answer at the end of our video. Star-Lord. Star-Lord has amassed more than 350,000 murders. Most casual comic book movie fans hadn't even heard of Peter Quill, aka Star-Lord, before 2014's Guardians of the Galaxy movie was released. He was a C-list superhero from an obscure comic book title. Now, thanks to Chris Pratt's epic portrayal of him in said movie, in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, he's hugely popular, and a hero to millions. Granted, he's a mischievous outlaw in the movies, but he's generally a nice guy, whose goodness totally shone through in the end. However, in the comic books, he's actually a mass murderer. In fact, Star-Lord is known to have amassed more than 350,000 murders in the comics. That is according to the Nova Corps records, which makes him one of the most prolific killers in all of Marvel. Daredevil influenced the creation of the Ninja Turtles. Daredevil is currently one of Marvel's most popular heroes, thanks to his fantastic Netflix series, in which Charlie Cox brilliantly portrays the Hell's Kitchen vigilante. That series has to be one of the high points of the character's history, but it pales into insignificance when you realize that Daredevil was the main inspiration behind the creation of none other than the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. When Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird created the Reptilian Quartet, they took inspiration from the style of Frank Miller's iconic Daredevil run. They also made the Turtles' origin story mirror that of The Man Without Fears, which depicted a young boy saving an old man and being blinded by radioactive chemicals. Their sensei, Splinter, was named after Daredevil's mentor, Stick, and the Turtles' main foes, the Foot Clan, were inspired by Daredevil enemies, the Hand. A team-up between the two entities would be awesome, but sadly, intercompany politics have made that impossible up to now. Supergirl's first boyfriend was her pet horse. We mentioned in our previous Superhero Facts video that Aquaman's first love was a dolphin, but we think we can beat that with this weird fact. Supergirl's first boyfriend was her pet horse. The 1960s seemed to take a She-Ra-esque camp approach to Supergirl's storytelling, and that was never more evident than when her superpowered horse Comet appeared. Comet ended up receiving a human form, Bronco Bill Starr, and Supergirl actually embarked on a romantic relationship with him. The weird thing was that he was only able to assume this form when a certain Comet passed the Earth, meaning that, for the majority of the time, he was indeed still a horse. Thankfully, as the 60s came to a close, this kind of sugar-coated weirdness petered out with it. Thought you could use a hand. The Silver Surfer has citizenship in over 190 countries. The Silver Surfer is an extraterrestrial superhero, hailing from the planet Zen La. Although Earth is very familiar to him, and indeed the people of Earth in the Marvel Universe are very familiar with him, he certainly isn't a native of the planet. It should come as a surprise to you, therefore, to learn that he actually has citizenship in more than 190 of Earth's countries. The Surfer did, of course, earn his citizenships by saving the planet on more than one occasion. The one time he saved the Earth from having all of its culture removed and replaced by his native race is the one that stood out to several US and representatives. They decided to give him citizenship to their countries, which included China, France, and Russia, to name a few. He has subsequently given citizenship to the rest of the planet's countries, which is more than any actual Earthling can say. No evil shall escape my sight. Green Lantern's powers were inspired by Aladdin. When you think of all the characters that came before him in fiction, Superman, Buck Rogers, Captain Nemo, and many others, one of the last you would ever think of as having influenced the creation of Green Lantern is Aladdin. However, it was indeed the main character of the Middle Eastern folk tale, one of the Arabian Nights stories, that inspired the creation of Alan Scott, DC's first Green Lantern. When you think about it, it's not actually that strange either. Aladdin got anything he wanted from the genie of the lamp, very much like the constructs Green Lantern Corps members can will into existence. Moreover, Scott was very nearly named Alan Ladd, as an homage to Aladdin. However, it was decided that Ladd would be his middle name, which was probably for the best in retrospect. Get what? You didn't see that coming? Hawkeye was originally a villain. Hawkeye is, in every sense of the word, a hero. Although he wasn't a founding member of the Avengers, he was the second character, after Captain America, to join the original team. And he's been a mainstay in the lineup for most of the subsequent 60 plus years since then. He's brave 
incredibly skilled, and fights against superpowered foes in spite of the fact that he has no superhuman abilities of his own. However, when he first appeared on panel in a 1964 issue of Tales of Suspense, Clint Barton was presented as an enemy of Iron Man's. Although he was more confused than malicious, he was still a villain, and it took him around nine months to pledge his alliance to the side of good. So, next time you watch 2012's The Avengers and see Hawkeye as a mind-controlled bad guy for the bulk of it, don't forget that that's exactly how the character was originally intended to be. Doctor Strange was based on a character from a radio show. The Sorcerer Supreme, Doctor Strange, was, of course, created by the iconic pairing of artist and writer Steve Ditka and Marvel legend Stan Lee. Lee has actually admitted that Strange was initially Ditka's idea, but says that he had a lot of creative input and responsibility with regard to the character's overall conception. It has since been revealed by Lee that their character was heavily based on a little-known character called Chandu the Magician, the star of a humble radio program that aired on the mutual broadcasting system in the 1930s. The program also went on to become a film in 1932, just like Doctor Strange did in 2016, and was about a man who was both a magician and a secret agent. Do you bleed? You could study Batman at college. There was a time when the entire concept of superheroes was largely seen as a guilty pleasure by those who enjoyed it. People who liked superheroes in the comic books they appeared in were often mocked. Comics weren't taken seriously as a medium, and superheroes as a genre were seen as silly. But it's not like that these days. In fact, you can actually study Batman at college. No, really, there's a genuine college course called The Science of Batman at the University of Victoria in Canada. And when you think about it, there are actually many aspects of the Dark Knight that could be studied, mainly of a psychological variety. But this course actually focuses on the physical side of the character. The course description reads, The extreme range of adaptability of the human body explored through the life of the Caped Crusader. The limited edition, Voltron Defender of the Universe ring, or for four. Deadpool's healing factor is his only superhuman ability. Deadpool is so enormously popular these days, thanks in no small part to Ryan Reynolds' brilliant portrayal of the character in his 2016 titular movie, that his fans are often in denial about the level he's at on the power ladder. Claims that he could beat the likes of Superman and the Hulk in a straight-up fight are often made, but they're ridiculous. Why? Because Deadpool's only power is his superhuman regenerative healing factor. Deadpool isn't super strong. He's not super fast. He can still feel pain, like the rest of us, and, aside from occasionally having a teleporter in his possession, his weapons and gadgets are largely underwhelming. He's basically a peak human who recovers from injury insanely quick. That's it. <laughs> Captain America lived in an alternate dimension for more than a decade. Captain America has been a staple part of the 616 Marvel Universe's Earth since he first appeared on panel in 1941. It's hard to imagine that timeline without a minute, but the truth is, he's actually spent a whopping 12 years away from it, by virtue of the fact that that's how long he was trapped in another dimension on one occasion. Arnim Zola abducted him and trapped him in the post-apocalyptic hellscape dimension known as Dimension Z. Cap was stuck there for 10 issues, which, as previously mentioned, spanned 12 years. However, to his allies back in his world, it had only been a few minutes, and they barely realized he'd gone missing. That's gotta be tough to take. In that time, Cap had been through all manner of experiences, including raising a young boy, until he was brought home by writer Rick Remender in 2013's Captain America No. 10. Thanks for watching our video about 10 more superhero facts that never crossed your mind. And the answer to the movie emoji is... Did you get the right answer? Let us know in the comments below. And don't forget to like the video and subscribe to Screen Rant for more fun videos like this one.